Did you know at the time of this recording, there are 10 states that require you to post a salary range on all jobs that you post? It seems like every single year, more and more states are starting to require this in an attempt to create more pay transparency. This is World's Greatest Boss, the podcast that helps you become the leader your team admires and helps you follow the rules along the way. My name is Jackie Koch, and my goal is to help you tackle leadership challenges, build effective teams, and ensure your business is in compliance so that you can avoid some of the headaches and mistakes that I've had to help clean up with an organization. I have over 15 years experience in HR and recruiting, specifically with high growth startups, and I've hired hundreds of people, been the trusted advisor to many CEOs. And today on the show, I'm breaking down pay transparency, what it actually is. You may or may not have heard the word out there in the ethos. We're going to talk about what it means for your business and my personal opinion on it. There is nothing worse than posting a job that you're hiring for and you include a salary range and your current employees see it and start the game of telephone saying something like, hey, do you see that they're going to be hiring blah, blah, blah role? And the salary is this. Are you making that? I'm not. And I'll be the first to tell you that this happens all the time. And it's not even just when you're posting a job. I promise you, your employees are talking to each other about how much they are being paid. And it is creating unnecessary drama in your business. Having run HR and recruiting teams for a very long time, I'm a big fan of setting up salary ranges for the different jobs and the different levels within your company and being transparent about what those are with your team and how you're making compensation decisions, how you decide what to pay people. The more transparent you can be about that, the better. And I actually don't see any reason why you shouldn't, to be honest. So while I'm not a fan of needing to create more laws for businesses that dictate how employers run things, I do stand pretty firm that when rolled out well, pay transparency and a proactive compensation strategy only improves the trust on your team and helps you attract the right talent. It helps you have the right conversations about compensation in your business and inevitably helps you follow the laws that are going into place. So what is pay transparency anyways? So pay transparency refers to the practice of openly sharing information and compensation within your company. It includes disclosing salary ranges for job postings, providing your current team with information about the pay scales, or the pay ranges for their jobs, and being able to share rationale behind how you've made compensation decisions and why people are paid the way that they are. And in my opinion, this level of transparency is just good for business. It builds trust with your employees, your most costly OPEX, which is salaries, right, and what you pay people. It helps forecast that. And then it also just helps ensure you're building a fair and equitable work environment. Transparency and pay practices can also build trust among your team because they understand how their compensation compares to others and they feel confident that pay decisions are being made fairly and equitably. That just makes sense to me as a business owner. It just always made sense to me in HR. Why don't we come up with strategies of this so that there's reasons for it and then we can have these conversations with employees? It just makes sense. A lot of businesses have never done this. It hasn't been historically required by law, although it is required in a lot of other countries. Here in the U.S., it's not been a law. And I don't love when we have to put laws into place to treat people well, but that's what's happening. The intention is when businesses are transparent about pay, the government believes it can help address and reduce the wage disparities based on gender, race, and other factors. I don't know that I necessarily think that that law alone is going to solve the problem, and nor do I think that more laws have the effect of this. I don't actually think that, but that doesn't mean I don't think that being transparent about compensation strategies is a good idea for business. So even though all of this makes sense to me for building a strong culture, it can be challenging to navigate and roll out with your team, and so companies don't do it. And so I want to talk a little bit about 
what things you should think about as it relates to pay transparency within your business. Or, you know, if you're leading HR within a big company, how I would think about doing it. So the first way that it shows up, and I'm actually going to talk about it in the order in which I think you should actually do this, because a big problem of what's happening is these laws are rolling out. So all of a sudden people are like, oh, shit, I have to post salary ranges now on my job postings. So you run out and post it. And then an employee sees it and they get pissed off. The first thing you should actually do is roll it out internally first before you start posting jobs. So if you live in a state that doesn't have this requirement, I promise you it's probably coming. So you might as well do this work internally to set it up so that when it does roll out, it's easy for you. And if you're listening and you're like, oh, I know that in the state of California, people are supposed to post the salary ranges, but they're not. It could be because they haven't done the work of setting it up internally and they know it's going to cause headache and they're scared of their employees if they post their jobs. So there's a lot of reasons why people don't do it. But where it shows up is with your current team. So you need to be prepared to provide your employees with information about the pay ranges for their jobs if they ask. Of these 10 states that have laws right now, this is part of most of their laws. You have to provide pay ranges to your current team if they ask. The second is the job posting. So when advertising job openings, you have to include a salary range for the position. So those are the two biggest ways that it shows up. And then, of course, there's like the legal compliance of it where multiple states have this requirement. So how do you actually roll it out and how do you actually do this? How do you make sure that you have the right ranges in place for your team and that you're posting it and all of that stuff? First, you want to really create a pay and salary strategy for your internal team. To do this, you want to start to create some salary bands for the different jobs within your business. Everybody listening to this has different types of businesses, but if you have a lot of employees who are not hourly, like working shift work or anything like that, and they're just like working remote jobs or computer jobs, I really think you could get away with having four job levels within your company. One would be like entry level positions. A second would be roles more like one to three years of experience, kind of like a developing position. A third would be fully skilled, like knows all of the core competencies of the job, kind of an autonomous professional. And then the fourth could be leading managers and you could have four different levels. And then what you do is you map each job that you have in your business to one of those levels. If you have a social media manager, if you have an executive assistant, if you have a salesperson, you kind of map them all back to the different levels. And then you can set salary ranges for those levels. So the ranges can be fairly large. One level might be a $30,000 range. That's fine, but they can all be mapped to the same level. That way, if you have somebody who is at the same level of skill in a marketing role as somebody in an operations role, they're being paid fairly for the level of work that they're doing. And it's easier to maintain than trying to keep salary ranges for every department, every job can get a little bit challenging. So that's the first thing I recommend is setting up the levels of the jobs that you need in your business and then mapping the jobs that you have to a certain level. And then from there, what you want to do is you want to plot where people are within those ranges that you created, which you probably want to go and do some compensation market research to figure out what the average is paying for some of these roles to establish the low end and the high end. And then you want to plot your current team and figure out if there's any outliers. If there's people who are making way above band, how are you going to handle those? If there's people making way below band, how are you going to get them into the band? Now, there's a lot of ways that you can do that. I'm not going to talk about that on this episode. I don't necessarily think if somebody's $10,000 below band, I don't think that means, oh, I have to give them a $10,000 raise. It just means you're going to try to work to get them into band. So you want to plot those. And if you notice that there are people drastically different, you just want to look into why and what might have happened to make that be the case. And this can be a especially difficult in startups who have equity as a part of their total compensation. A lot of times when you start hiring people really early in your business and you have equity, you give people a lot more equity versus cash comp. And then as you're starting to build your team and you have more people, equity tends to decrease, but cash comp goes up. 
So then what happens with your early employees who have a really high equity stake in the business, which theoretically could be worth a lot more than cash comp. So you have to figure out how you can estimate the value of equity to compare it to a cash value. That's hard to do because 0% of zero is zero, but figuring out a way to do that helps and doing it in a way that's truthful and fair. Because what can happen is if you look at just salaries, somebody who started later and has less equity might look like they're actually compensated higher than somebody who started earlier with less salary but higher equity. And so you just want a fair way of doing that. And it can get messy. And if you're not being truthful with your team about how you're doing it, it can cause issues. We had this at a company that I worked for. I'll never forget, we had a time where we had an employee. She was one of the first people hired in the business. And she had a pretty hefty equity grant and a lower base salary because of that equity grant. And that's very typical when you hire people early. And as we hired more people to the team, specifically into her team, we had to hire another person in a similar role. And that person had a higher salary, but significantly less equity. So it did make sense as to the difference, but we didn't do a good job as a business of explaining the value of equity, explaining our salary processes and our compensation processes for people to understand that. And she found out and was really upset for a long time and didn't bring it up. And so she was stewing on it. And when she finally brought it up, she was so hurt and she felt really disappointed in us as a business. And if we had this transparency and at least a strategy around how we were paying people and we shared it with the team, she would have at least known how it was dictated and she might have felt differently about it. She might not have, right? We don't know. But I do think if we had at least been transparent with her and she hadn't randomly found out on her own and then not said anything, I think we could have at least helped her transition or work through that. But regardless of how much we tried to explain it to her, I don't think we ever recovered from that. And I think we lost her trust, which is a really big bummer. And so that can be really hard to do in startups where equity is involved. Once you've established pay ranges for the different levels within your organization, you don't have to publish it or anything like that. You can figure out how you communicate it to your team. Then you can start to post the salary ranges on your job postings. Because then if people ask, oh, yeah, we can share this and this is where you fall. This is why this is what we're doing or how we're handling it. You can start to be prepared to have those conversations. I think a lot of times employers hesitate to post salary ranges because they're still caught in this old school mentality of hiring people. And they think, I might find someone who wants to make less. And they're always trying to pay people less. Sometimes you're in a position in your business where you can't pay a lot of money. And I get that. But going into it of like, how can I find the best person for the cheapest amount, I don't think is the right approach. I think doing the work of figuring out what you can pay and what your salary range is for a position and then going out and posting that and talking to people who would be happy with that salary range is the best approach. There's this mentality of, I'm going to wait to see what they want to make before I tell them what I can pay. And it's like this really awkward waiting for somebody to go first when you know what you're able to pay. So why not just share it? It literally makes the conversation so much easier when you really think about it. It just sets the whole relationship on the wrong foot. If you're waiting to see who goes first, it's just like a weird way to kick off a working relationship where if you have set salary ranges and you disclose them and you find people who are happy working within that range, it gets rid of the back and forth about who's going to go first and it sets the relationship off on a very transparent conversation around something that can get really heated and awkward within companies. And then you have a framework for discussing compensation raises and adjustments in the future. It just makes sense to have this stuff done and have it be an open dialogue. So as you can see, I'm a huge fan of pay transparency from a building a transparent company culture perspective. And so even if I haven't convinced you this is a good idea in your business during this episode, the reality is there's a lot of states that require it by law. If you have employees within states that have this requirement, and if you're going to be posting jobs within states that have this requirement, you have to know what they are. And so you might as well start to think about this stuff now, because I truly believe this is just going to end up being 
federal at some point, to be honest. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but that's my guess. And so you want to make sure you check in on the salary transparency laws in the states that you do have employees. By now, you should at least know what pay transparency means and how it may impact your business and how you can start to create some proactive strategies in your business to start to make sure you're following these laws and starting to set up a more transparent conversation and culture as it relates to pay. And doing so is going to help you start to have these conversations in a way that feels a little less awkward and a little bit less reactive and a little bit more proactive. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the episode. Before you go, I have a small favor to ask. If you've ever gotten any value from any episodes on the show and you want us to continue growing and attracting more knowledgeable guests and just continue to provide you with really great hiring people strategies, leave us a rating and a review on Apple or Spotify. It really goes a long way. Your reviews really help us bring in more guests to the show and honestly help me understand what things you're looking for. I would love to know the episodes you found valuable, what parts of the episode and what you want to hear more of because it just helps me create the right stuff so that you can go out and be a good boss. So if you're up for it, we'd love to see a rating and a review from you. So thank you for listening and until next time, go out and be a great boss.